There are many reasons to like Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, but which OS offers more potential for the user in the long run? Here's 10 reasons why Linux is a better OS than either Mac OS or Windows. Number one, the code base is open source. We already know Linux is free to use and free to obtain, but more importantly, there is a freedom from surveillance by companies such as Microsoft or Apple. Additionally, well-established open source applications such as Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC, and many of the other apps available don't stretch the bounds of user privacy. With the constant erosion of privacy by Windows, macOS and iOS, and even Android, it's refreshing to know that the Linux environment respects user privacy. This isn't to say that there aren't some Linux distributions that may collect data on the user. It's well known that Ubuntu collects at least some information in conjunction with the Amazon app that is installed. Of course, the maker of Ubuntu is a for-profit company and must bring in revenue somehow. Ubuntu has brought some amazing changes to the Linux community, which are freely available for any Linux distribution to use. Number two, different desktop environments to suit a variety of user needs. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, there are different desktop environments to choose from that is easily configurable for the end user. Some of the more popular desktop environments are GNOME, KDE Plasma, XFCE, and Cinnamon. Users can also have more than one desktop environment installed and switch between them at any time. Although Windows 10 and Mac OS offer a consistent user environment, it also lacks any real revolutionary changes. Users are greeted with the same interface day in and day out. Examples of lackluster trivial changes include the flattening of the minimize, maximize, and close buttons. Although there are small changes and tweaks, the core of macOS has essentially remained the same to this day. Some may say that the touch bar on macOS is an example of recent innovation, but this is a weak attempt to compete with Microsoft's touchscreen interface. Both are a mix of hardware and software, but in this video we're going to stay focused on primarily software changes. Number 3. Stable code base is far better than Windows or Mac. Although every OS has its bugs, Linux users will tell you that Linux is by far the most stable and resilient operating system available. Most Linux users are also users of Windows or Mac OS, or both. With that experience, they can tell you that Linux does an excellent job at supporting a large, established platform of hardware and receives frequent and useful updates almost daily. To be sure, this can be particularly subjective and most users will defend their choice of system. This is not to say Linux isn't without its problems. Some third-party hardware, such as video cards, can be downright difficult to install and configure the driver. Once the driver is installed, however, as always, problems are at a minimum. Number four, ability to work with Linux, Unix, Mac, or Windows file systems. Unlike its competitors, Linux can easily read and write to HFS plus or NTFS formatted drives. This is a major time saver when one is transferring files back and forth from a Linux system to another system. For example, Windows will not even see a Linux or Mac OS formatted drive and offer to format the drive with NTFS when it is plugged in. Mac OS at least can read a Windows formatted drive, so it's possible to get the data from the drive. Number 5. Linux can be installed on any PC or Mac. Linux is system agnostic and can easily be installed on any hardware platform. Linux can also be installed on ARM-based systems such as the Raspberry Pi, making it the most universally accepted OS on a variety of hardware. But it doesn't stop there. Linux is very capable of installing on a system that already has an OS, even if the drive is completely formatted. For example, if your Windows system has an NTFS partition across the entire drive, the Linux installer in Fedora is able to shrink the partition and install. The user can then select the OS to boot from easily at startup. Number 6. Open Source Application Availability 
There are plenty of applications to choose from in Linux and every category of software is covered. From office apps to programming, graphics, internet, multimedia, and games, one can find quality open source apps. Although Linux doesn't boast as many apps as Windows or Mac OS, there are literally thousands of applications for a wide variety of needs. Number 7. Easy and Intuitive Updater Linux overshadows both Windows and Mac with its powerful and quick update application. Regardless of the distribution, Linux is capable of updating apps in real time while a user continues to work, without the need of a reboot. There are a few packages that require a reboot, such as the kernel. On those rare occasions that do require a reboot, the user gets to choose when. Incidentally, after the reboot, there are no additional steps and the system boots up immediately. Included with bug fixes and enhancements for the OS and apps are security updates. Although the update process can be automated, the choice of when and how is fully within the user's control. Users are able to disable individual packages from being updated or entire repositories. Contrast this with the daily nag screen from Mac OS or the intrusive and arbitrary way that Windows applies updates with little or no input from the user. It's no surprise for Windows 10 to take 20 to 30 minutes to install updates, then take another 20 minutes to finish updates after rebooting. Number 8. Genuinely fun to set up and work with. One can create their own custom environment, write their own programs, or enhance existing programs. The ability to tweak and change just about everything in Linux is reminiscent of the 80s when PC enthusiasts would meet and trade ideas about computers or shareware programs. There never seemed to be a lack of exciting new changes or programs to talk and learn about. Many users enjoyed writing custom batch scripts for DOS and pushing their 8086 or 8088 computers as far as possible. Indeed, the Roll Your Own system was most likely created back then. Today this collaborative and enthusiastic environment is infectious in Linux and is very conducive to the do-it-yourself user. Number 9. A large support group. The enthusiasm of Linux users is apparent. One has only to do a search on the internet and you will quickly find a myriad of help sites and forums with users ready to offer help and support for just about any Linux based topic. YouTube is another great example of Linux support. There are thousands of videos with help on just about any Linux topic. Yes, there are Windows and Mac OS support videos as well, but some issues are limited by Microsoft and Apple. Many times Linux users will write and compile a code fix for the problem, while a Windows or Mac user will have to wait for the company to release an update, if they ever do. And number 10. The future is transparent. Although Microsoft and Apple are not likely to disappear anytime soon, they do have complete control over their products. They can choose how long a product will be supported and even how long it will be available. In the open source community there is a lot of discussion about the difference in software development philosophies known as the cathedral and the bazaar. Eric S. Raymond originally wrote about this concept in an essay and later in a book published in 1999. On one hand, a company like Microsoft uses the cathedral philosophy, meaning all code is closed and produced in-house. If the company chooses to no longer support or release a product, it can do so on a whim. Users are never aware of the actual source code, nor can they gain access to it or edit it. The bizarre philosophy is more of a bottom-up development style, meaning that software code is developed by anyone over the internet and is open and transparent for all to see or change. Raymond considers this development style to have first been created by Linus Torvalds when he began the Linux project. There are many advantages to the bizarre, most importantly that no one person or organization controls access to the source code and anyone is free to participate in its development. Linux and the packages that make up a distribution like Fedora, Debian, or Arch are all open source and developed by anyone who has an interest. Although distributions may come and go, the core of Linux and its supporting applications will always be available and developed regardless of the downfall or change of any one company. 
Many companies such as Google, IBM, Microsoft, and others actively participate in the development of Linux and its well-established code base. This ensures that Linux will be around for a very long time and as we have seen, will only continue to get better and better. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you found it really useful, please share. As always, drop a comment, let me know what you think. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.